What I mean by expand in this case is we see a logarithm that has a quotient on the inside. Like on the inside of the logarithm, I have x divided by 1,000. What you do when you expand this is you take a look at your properties of exponents and you say, I want to use number 6. So number 6 on our properties of logarithms says that this expression that I'm given is the same thing as if I had written log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of 1,000. Does everybody see how property number 6 of logarithms allows us to write that? Hillary, do you still have this? Or do you want another copy? Okay, cool. And also, do you see why we use the word expand when we describe what we want to do here? It's like we're, we're taking one logarithm and then we're expanding it out into two different logarithms. Okay. Um, there's one more step we can do in this case to, to finish expanding here. I could recognize maybe that um, 1,000 is the same thing as 10 raised to the power 3. Okay, so 10 to the third power, 10 times 10 times 10 gives me 1,000. And whenever I have an exponent now that's sitting inside of a logarithm like this, I could use property number 7 on this property sheet and say that that is the same thing as this. Do we see how we use property number seven on the page to get from that uh, second line to the third line? And now I could say well Ten is just the same thing as two times five. And if I have two times five inside of a logarithm, I could use property number five from my properties of logarithms page. So if we look at number 5, instead of writing log of 2 times 5, what I could write is log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 5. And then, what is log base 2 of 2? I'll give you a hint. You can look at property number 4 when I ask you what is log base 2 of 2. It would be 1. And so, this would be minus 3 times 1, minus 3 times log base 2 of 5. And this is as expanded as I can possibly make this. And this is the fully expanded version of what we started with. It doesn't really fit on one screen because there's a lot of steps here. But we started with log base 2 of x divided by 1,000. And the first step here was to use property number 7 to make this one logarithm into two logarithms. Then we recognized that 1,000 was just 10 to the third power. And then we used, when I said property number 
7 to make 10 to the third power into 3 times log base 2 of just 10. And then we recognize 10 was just 2 times 5. And then we use property number 5 to break that up into two logarithms. Then we use property number 4 when we realized we had log base 2 of 2. And then we distributed the negative 3 inside the parentheses. And that's how I got that this is log base 2 of x minus 3 minus 3 times log base 2 of 5. Does everybody feel good about that? We'll do more examples. We'll, we, can, we can do examples for the next 80 minutes if you want to. Um, but this is, this is what I mean whenever I ask you to expand. So if there's a question on your exam that says, please expand this logarithm expression, you just use these properties of logarithms to make it into <laughs> more logarithms and, and simplify as much as you possibly can. So I'm just going to alternate between these because sort of the opposite version of expand is I could give you a question that says condense. And let's say we want to condense this. I've got 3 times natural log x. plus 5 times natural log y minus 6 times natural log z. So now when I say condense, I want to go in the reverse direction. Like This would be like the fully expanded form of this expression. So now we're going to try to package everything up nice and neat into just one logarithm. Um, and to begin with, for each of these three terms that I see here, I'm going to use logarithms property number seven. right? And so where I have three times natural log of x, that could become natural log of what? Yes, x cubed. Again, we're looking at property number seven. Um, by the way, a few people came in late. Do you guys have this page that says properties of logarithms? If you need an extra copy, I can get you an extra copy. I've got a few here, but we're all good. OK. Yeah, so using property number seven, we got that. And then also, this middle term becomes natural log of what? What goes here? y to the fifth, absolutely. And then this last one is going to become natural log of what? z to the sixth. Excellent. Now, looking at the first two terms here, if I want to combine those two logarithms into just one logarithm, which property on my page am I going to use? Number five, yeah. Number five, if I'm adding two logarithms, then I can use property number five and say, well, adding these two logarithms is the same thing as just writing one logarithm that's going to be x cubed times y to the fifth, like that. OK? And now that I'm left with these two terms, what property can I use from your page that's going to uh, combine those neatly into one logarithm? Hmm? Number yes, number six. So if I see that I'm subtracting two logarithms, I can, again, combine those into just one logarithm where I divide instead of subtract on the inside. And that is the fully condensed version. of what I started with. So do, we, do you feel good about that? Do you see how that would be condensing and how condensing is sort of the reverse of 
expanding like we did in the first example. Okay, so I'll switch back and we'll do another expanding example now. So I'm, I'm going to switch back and forth between expanding and condensing because this is this is like my personal uh, my personal study strategy is that like whenever I'm taking a course um, if I want to practice like using the, the questions in the back of every section they're sort of like divided up like there's a whole bunch of questions there's 40 questions about expanding logarithms and then there's another 40 questions about condensing logarithms. And then there's some questions about graphing logarithms and then some application questions and so on. Everybody just has a limited amount of time in their week, right? Like, no, nobody has just enough time to work every single question in the whole book. So, if I know I only have an hour to study, and I just tried to study by working question one, and then question two, and then question three, and then just going down the list, then I'm going to have spent an hour and then only got into question maybe maybe question 30, let's say, if I worked really fast. But uh, in those 30 questions, I've only practiced expanding logarithms. And I haven't practiced condensing at all. And I haven't practiced the graphing. And I haven't practiced the applications and so on. So like my personal strategy whenever I go to study for a test is I'll do one question from the first section. And then I'll do question number 41 because that's from the next section then I'll do question number 81 because that's from the next section and I'll, I'll try to practice one of each type and then I start from the top again and I, I restart okay so um, that's why I'm going to go back and forth between expanding and condensing because I think it's just nice to switch between the two and that way we don't accidentally spend all of our time expanding and not get enough condensing practice so anyways um, Here's another expand that we can do. What if I have log base 4 of square root x divided by 64? So the first thing I want to do is I look inside the logarithm and I say I've got a quotient of two different things. So I'm thinking about property number six. number six, yeah. So whenever I'm dividing inside of a logarithm, I think I could split that up into two logarithms where I'm subtracting now instead of dividing. So it would look like this. Okay. The next thing I would do is I would recognize x, well, if I take the square root of x, that's like x raised to what power? One half, yeah. If I have x raised to the one half power, that is the same thing as square root x. It's the definition of what I mean by having a fraction in my exponent. And then over here, I'll have log base 4 of. 64, but 64 is just 4 raised to what power? Mm -hmm. 4 squared would be 16. What would be 4 cubed? Yeah, so 4 cubed would be 4 times 16, and 4 times 16 is 64. So this was the same thing as log base 4 of 4 cubed. Okay, and then for my next step, I would think about property number... Seven. 
7. Yeah, property number 7. And that says if I have an exponent happening inside my logarithm, I can just pull that out and multiply. So I have 1 half times log base 4 of x, then minus 3 times log base 4 of 4. And what is log base 4 of 4? Yep, that is just 1. And so this is the fully expanded form of what I started with. Any questions about this sequence of uh, properties here? Okay, so that was an expand. Let's try a condensed question next. All right, so if I were trying to combine these first two logarithms, because I'm trying to condense them, um, we're thinking about property number five. Yeah, number five. So when I'm adding two logarithms, I'm just going to write one logarithm where I'm multiplying on the inside like this. Um, I'll just take this one step at a time because I don't want to make any mistakes with all the adding and subtracting that's going on. Okay, then what about if I wanted to combine these two logarithms to condense it? I'm thinking about property number number six. Yeah, so if I'm subtracting two logarithms now I can rewrite this as one logarithm where I'm dividing inside the logarithm like this. And then I still have this last logarithm on the end, log base 5 of x plus 2. Now if I'm subtracting these two logarithms I can do something very similar. I can write log base 5 of x times x squared minus 4 over 15 now times x plus 2. So I'm dividing by the new x plus 2. Now am I done or is there something I can do to simplify this a little bit more? Yep. 
What should I do to make that simpler? Oh, yeah. I could distribute. Um, I don't want to, though. Here's a hint. What would, I, what would I get if I factored x squared minus 4? Yeah. So if I factored this, I would end up with x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then, do you see anything I can simplify now? Yeah, I could cancel out x plus 2 and x plus 2. And now, it's going to be a little bit simpler. And then I could distribute if I wanted to. And the top could be like x squared minus 2x. And then the bottom could just be 15. And that would be the fully condensed version. Everyone still feels good about this? <coughs> when we combined in the, the minus log 5 of 15? Um, <coughs> like where we combine these? Yeah. OK. So you should be looking at property number 6. So we are subtracting two logarithms. Mm -hmm. And property number six says I can combine those into one logarithm as long as I divide by the 15. Yeah. So if you look at property number six, 15 would be my c. Mm -hmm. And then the x times x squared minus 4 would be my b. And that, yeah. When you broke down the x plus 2 to multiply by the 15, is that number 6 too? I brought down the x plus 2. To get x plus 2, um, you multiply by 15. Is that property number 6? Oh, yeah. OK, yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. When I'm combining these two logarithms into this one, yeah, then we used property number 6 again, where um, c would be x plus 2, and then b and property number six, B would be all of this stuff all together. So dividing by x plus two is what made x plus two go in the denominator. That's a good question. OK. Let me give you an expand problem. All right, so we've seen some expand examples already. I'm going to give you like a few minutes to try this on your own. And then I'll show you the answer so you can check your answer here in a few minutes.
All right, so let's go over this together, make sure everybody got the right answer here. And let's see here what would be the first thing that you do here to expand this. Okay. Yeah, so this would be log base 6 of 36 minus log base 6 of square root x plus 1. Yeah, and that would be your first step as you're expanding this as we look at property number 6, where it says if you're dividing inside of a logarithm, then you can just write two logarithms where you're subtracting those logarithms. The first logarithm is going to have your numerator inside the parentheses, that second logarithm is going to have your whole denominator inside the parentheses. Yeah. So at this point, um, what I'm thinking is that 36 is just the same thing as 6 raised to what power? Six. Or two. 2. 2, yeah. 6 times 6 is 36, so this is 6 squared. Okay? And then we said this a moment ago a little bit earlier in class. But if I'm taking the square root of something, that's the same as what exponent? One half, yeah. So instead of writing square root of x plus one, I can write x plus one to the power one half. And then my next strategy to expand this is gonna be to look at property number seven, perfect. Since I have exponents inside my logarithm, I can now pull those out and call this 2 times log base 6 of 6 minus 1 half times log base 6 of x plus 1. Now what is log base 6 of 6? One. 1, excellent. So Property number four tells me that since the base and the input to my logarithm match, that's just one, or two times one, minus one half times log base six of x plus one. And this would be the fully expanded, fully simplified version of the thing. Right. Any questions here? Hilly? Um, on a number one, does that only work whenever it's actually x? I've only had a log base 6, 6 squared. Um, no, so that, that actually worked, right? So, you're right, if I saw log base 6 of 6 squared, that should be, according to property number 1, that should be 2. And it was 2. <laughs> yeah, so I took too many steps. I took, I took more steps than I needed oh, okay. to. Because I could have looked at property number 1 and said, yeah, log base 6 of 6 to the 2 power is 2. And I could have just written that. But it, it would work, yeah. It would definitely work. It's a good question. Any others? Okay. So that was an expand problem. Let me give you a condensed problem now.
Okay. So again, I'll give you a few minutes to try this. And after a few minutes, we'll go over the answers together. Okay, so let's see. What should we do first if we want to condense this? Yeah, exactly. So I see that I'm subtracting two logarithms. And so I should combine those two logs inside the parentheses as one logarithm base 4. And what goes inside here? Perfect. x divided by y. And now I've got 1 third times log base 4 of x divided by y. How do I continue to condense this? Yeah, number 7. So I can take that one-third that's currently sitting out in front of the logarithm and I can rewrite this as x divided by y to the power what? One-third. And um, how do we calculate the one-third power? We say that one, you know, the raising something to the one third power is the same as taking the cube, the cube root. Yeah, and so I could write log base four of the cube root of x over y, and that is perfect. So if you left it like that, like on the head, could you give us some For what? If I you left it like what? Like that. Um, so I, I would give definitely, um, if this were an open-ended question, I would give partial credit, right? So if I just leave you with a blank page, 
and you do this, well, then you'd get one third of the credit. And if you do this, and you get two thirds of the credit, and that'd be the, this, you got full credit. Um, if it's a multiple choice question, then this would be the only correct answer choice, and you just have to know it's the same. OK. So let's do another expand. Let's expand long base five of root x over Okay, so try that one. And we'll see what we get.
All right, so anybody volunteer? What is the very first step I do if I want to expand? <coughs> yep. So I'm dividing inside the logarithm. And that means I can rewrite this as two logarithms where I am subtracting. So your numerator goes in the first one, and then you subtract a logarithm, and your denominator goes in the second one. Like that. And then, what is square root of x as an exponent? x to the one half. Yep, it would be x to the one half. And then over here, how can I expand out this logarithm? Um, so I, there's, a, there's that exponent there, that y to the third power, but um, 25 isn't raised to the third power, and so you're not going to pull out the exponent yet. We're going to save that for like the next step. Yeah, so what should I do before that? Yeah, I can, I can do that, and that doesn't, that doesn't hurt anything, so... Um, 25 is the same thing as 5 squared. And over here, for this first logarithm, now I can actually pull out that 1 half, right? So I can write 1 half times log base 5 of x. Okay. For the second logarithm, now what should I do to expand? <coughs> Sorry, you said number number five? Yeah, you'd be right. So inside that logarithm, I have 5 squared times y cubed. And so I'm looking at number five because number five says whenever I'm multiplying inside of a logarithm, I can just separate that into two logarithms where I'm adding the logarithms. So I have to be really careful here. This would be an easy, easy, easy place to make a mistake. Um, since I'm subtracting this, whenever I expand this logarithm into two logarithms, I'm going to want to use parentheses and then write log base 5 of 5 squared plus log base 5 of y cubed. And the reason I'm, I'm being careful about the parentheses is because, you know, 5 squared times y cubed, the times means I'm going to add the two logarithms, right? So that's why I put a plus sign here. But I have to use the parentheses so that I remember to distribute this minus sign to both of those logarithms, right? So eventually, this last logarithm is going to be negative because I have to distribute that minus sign. And if I didn't use parentheses, then I would have lost track of it and I would have I'd have uh, gotten the problem wrong so I had the wrong plus or minus sign. So, got to be careful with that for sure. Then, I can write 1 half times log base 5 of x minus, um, what is log base 5 of 5 squared? 2. Yeah, we could use property number one here, right? <laughs> if I have log base five of five to the two power, well, those cancel out and I would just get two. And so I can distribute this minus sign and say this is minus two. And then I'll distribute this minus sign over here. And I can say minus log base five of y cubed. But how can I expand this out a little bit? Perfect. Yeah, I can take that exponent inside the logarithm and write it outside of the logarithm and write 3 times log base 5 of y. And then this is our fully expanded version.
Does that make sense to everybody, what we did? Okay. So that was an expand. Let's do another condense. There we go. All right, so it's my first step here. What should I do to this first term to condense that? Perfect. We've got natural log of x squared. What about the second term here? What if I want to condense that? It could be Nice. Yeah, that one-third out front would make a one-third exponent inside the logarithm, and the one-third exponent is the cube root. So this would be the natural log of cube root of x plus 5. And now, if I want to condense these two logarithms into just one logarithm, I could write natural log of what? This is going to be x squared times 
the cube root of x plus 5. And this would give you like full credit on an exam if you wrote that on an open-ended question. Just to be tricky, one thing that I might do is like make it like a multiple choice question and then write one of the answer choices. Well, I'll, I'll just make the only correct answer choice look like this. Um, just so you would have to recognize that that's really the same thing. Um, if you don't see that immediately, I'll show you why. Whenever I have x squared, that would be the same thing as writing the cube root of x to the sixth. And so if I have x squared times the cube root of x plus 5, this is like the cube root of x to the sixth times the cube root of x plus 5. And then remember, if I'm multiplying two radicals like that, I've got a cube root times another cube root. I can just combine those into one big cube root, which would be x to the 6 times x, and x to the 6 times 5. And so that's why I wrote this over here. right? And so um, I'm not going to require you to, gosh, I wish this would stop happening. <laughs> I don't know how to make it go away, right though. You would think that was the button to make it high, but it's a simony, so. Okay. Um, there we go. So anyways, uh, again, open-ended question, full credit. You can just use what I wrote in blue, and that would be totally fine. I wouldn't expect you to do this open-ended. In fact, this would probably be an even more convenient thing to work with if you're doing something like if you're doing calculus with this. But uh, just to, to make sure that you're aware of how to deal with um, exponents and radicals and that sort of thing, then I might try to make this a multiple choice question where that would be like a multiple choice response. Any questions about that? Okay. And the other thing you could do if it's multiple choice is Right, you could just do process of elimination, and you could, as long as you knew that the other three choices weren't correct, then you could narrow it down and make the correct answer.